Hello everyone, I am Jake Terrio and this... Hey everybody, I'm Jake Terrio here at Subpixel and today I wanted to talk to you about LEGO 2K Drive, a game for which I did trailer impressions and for which I have played several hours and have copious notes prepared. As I said in my earlier trailer impressions video, we will be doing at some point a longer, more involved review, but just for now, we wanted to do on this opening weekend, first couple hours, just quick impressions from a, uh, a LEGO Racers aficionado, if you will. It's been 22 years since the last formal LEGO Racers title, being LEGO Racers 2, developed by Attention to Detail, published in 2001. LEGO Racers Classic, released in 1999 by uh, Illinois-based High Voltage Software, just about a half hour from where I'm located right now. And then you had a lot of stuff in between that. You had Drome Racers, you had a bunch of canceled games. We have a whole video about the history of uh, LEGO Racers 3 that never came to be. We'll put that down in the description. You should watch it. It's pretty good. And yeah, now here, 2023, 22 years on, we've got a new LEGO racing game. And it's pretty fun. I'll just get that out of the way first and foremost. This game is, it's pretty fun. I'm just going to kind of be talking about the beginning through the first main championship race, which takes place in Big Butte County, which I think probably calculates out to like the first three or four hours, depending on how much meandering you're doing. So I kind of want to get this out of the way first, because I think it's important to a number of other things we're going to talk about. I mentioned in my impressions video that from the vehicle variety and kind of the stuff that they were showing, I was getting a LEGO Island Extreme Stunts vibe with, you know, oh, part of it's boating, part of it's driving, part of it's this, part of it's that. And now having played the hands-on, I can say that that is not the case. This does not feel like Island Extreme Stunts at all. What this feels like is Hydro Thunder. And I know that some of the staff at Visual Concepts come from a background with the Hydro Thunder games. I guess I just wasn't expecting so much Hydro Thunder DNA to be in LEGO 2K Drive. And I'm not talking exclusively about the boating sections. Even the driving has this kind of Hydro Thundery feeling to it that I can't really describe. You just have to kind of play it yourself. Obviously other gameplay inspirations. There's a lot of Mario Kart in this game. And I was also getting a little bit of like Hot Wheels Unleashed. I think all also in kind of the way the world is presented, which we'll talk about later. So yeah, a lot of Hydro Thunder, which I do not mind at all, because Hydro Thunder rips. And also, as far as gameplay inspirations are concerned, I mentioned in the trailer impressions video that I was worried this would feel akin to the Forza Speed Champions DLC, where it was just kind of like a Lego skin slapped on top of a more generic racing game. And I am happy to say that that is not the case. This definitely feels like a Lego racing game through and through. It feels like its own thing, even for all of the kind of very obvious gameplay inspirations that it it's drawing from. In terms of the gameplay itself in those first opening hours, there's going to be a lot of moments of the game kind of helping tutorialize you through the different driving styles. There's a drift, but there's also a quick turn, and there's the little hop and the boost. And then it's just kind of driving through the open world, going from race to race and doing events in between. You have to win checkered flags from certain rivals. And once you get enough checkered flags, you get to like a championship race. And it's once you beat all those championship races that you can go to the final, the Sky Cup which um, I'm not at yet, so we'll see how that plays out. And so the first big race that takes place in Big Butte County after you've collected enough checkered flags and you've leveled up enough and you've done enough whatever is basically just the Lake Powell Hydro Thunder level with a little bit of land racing dotted in between. I had such a weird kind of flashbacky feeling when I loaded into this race and then immediately off the starting line, I was like, whoa, this is, this is Lake Powell from Hydro Thunder. And I'm not saying that at all is a bad thing. I think it's really cool that they're kind of leaning pretty hard into not only having these land racing elements, but also then having the water racing. It all feels so good and it blends so well together. And I think it's really nice. I mentioned in my trailer impressions video, seeing all the stuff that they were including and watching a more extended GameSpot preview about the hands-on, I was worried the game would feel like it had spread itself a little too thin. With all the different, you've got the races, you've got the open world, you've got the on-the-go events, you've got quests, you've got this, you've got that, blah, 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 blah. I was worried it was going to be a little too much. 
Now having played it, I can say that that is not the case. It's mostly integrated really, really well. There's a couple of the kind of mini games that you have to go through a loading screen to get to, and then if you fail, you can't like quick restart them. You have to load back into the main overworld, and then you have to load back into the mini game, which is a little frustrating. But most of the events in the open world, most of which they're calling on the go events to kind of indicate to you that you can do them, you know, just as you're going through the world, kind of like the speed traps in, in Forza or some such. You do just go through the gate, the event starts, you do the thing, if you fail it, you can quick reload right back to the beginning and it's just, you know, a fade to black and fade up. Those are all really good and you do can't, you can just do them as you're driving from, you know, well, I have to go across the map to get to this thing. Oh, let me just go do a couple things in between. Bing, bang, boom, awesome. There's a great bit in one of the on-the-go events in Big Butte County where it's like, hey, you know, drive as fast as you can to get through the tunnel. And then they do a Wiley e. Coyote gag where you realize much too late that the tunnel is painted onto the side of the cliff face and you just smash into it and then it's like, okay, good job. And I, I don't know, that was that was fun. That was that was that was a good bit. Unlike LEGO Racers 1, where it was more arcadey, like the Mario Kart style, it's just hand-designed tracks in a series. These tracks are all kind of built into the open world. What that means then also is the races are checkpoint to checkpoint, where you have to go through gates in order to progress correctly around the track. And that's very similar to how it was in LEGO Racers 2. And in our LEGO Racers 2 review here on the channel, I said that. However, the fluid layout of each track also allows for some clever driving between waypoints, allowing players to create their own shortcuts through the tracks whenever possible. And so in LEGO 2K Drive, as in LEGO Racers 2, you can do that same kind of creative shortcutting between checkpoints if you can find a good opening. Now, unlike LEGO Racers 2, LEGO 2K Drive kind of suggests or teases certain paths of this kind by placing power-up pickups just kind of off what you would imagine the normal track to be. And then knowing that some of the development team worked on Hydro Thunder, I started to kind of see where the inspiration for that came from. Because Hydro Thunder does a very similar thing where it'll hide like a power up behind a waterfall that you'll kind of glance at and be like, oh wait, there's a power up over there. There must be a shortcut that way. Let me go that way. So in terms of the power-ups, they're almost exactly the same as the power-ups in LEGO Racers 2. There's like a dual landmine that's kind of filling in for the Slicer's bionicle throwing disc. But there's a homing missile, which is almost exactly the same. There's a ghost power-up that's kind of a stand-in for the ninja, both of which turn you invisible. Both LEGO Racers 2 and 2K Drive have an electrical explosion. 2K Drive does have like a gumball machine gun which doesn't really have an equivalent in LEGO Racers 2. But what LEGO 2K Drive has that LEGO Racers 2 doesn't have, but is taken from LEGO Racers 1, is what my brother and I always called the light speed power up, which in LEGO Racers 1 you would get by picking up a green brick and three white bricks, and here is just one of the roulette wheel power ups that just kind of shoots you down some section of the track really, really quick. And I wish it sounded like the light speed power up in LEGO Racers 1, but whatever. It's fun. In terms of art direction and art design and the kind of the way that these open worlds are created, I knew from the trailer going into it there was a, there was a specific bit in the trailer where a car drives off like a, a human watering hose and it turns into a boat and goes into the water. What wasn't clear to me then from the trailer is that by including these these human scale objects like the watering hose and in that first turbo acres area there's like a big wrench you can drive up and there's other kind of automotive maintenance objects kind of scattered about oil cans and and such and i don't think that's ever going to pay off in like some grand narrative reveal that this all takes place in a child's playroom i think it's more just playfully acknowledging that lego are small and they're building it out in this kind of Hot Wheels type world where it's incorporating real human elements and Lego elements in this mashed together world, which makes for an interesting series of environments, but I do kind of wish that they had gone wholly Lego, which I know is not the norm for Lego games. We've really only gotten that in Lego Worlds and Lego Builder's Journey and Lego Brick Tales. And two of those I think worked so well because they were on a much, much smaller scale. The worlds in Brick Tales are bigger than in Builder's Journey, but still not as huge as Lego Worlds. 
and Lego Worlds also being procedurally generated, whereas Builder's Journey and Bricktails were handcrafted, I don't know if something on the scale of 2K Drive really could be handled in that way. So I understand maybe why they didn't do it, but I still kind of wish we could get a AAA Lego game at this time and at this level that really just bought into this is a Lego game. We're going to make it out of Lego. And we're not going to be cutesy with it being like, oh yeah, it's a Lego world, but it's small because really they're in the people world. And in terms of art direction, apart from the human scale elements, there is a lot of care and detail in the actual Lego elements of the world. I mentioned in the trailer impressions video that I had hoped they would lean more into their own original Lego properties rather than making kind of these broad strokes, generic uh, uh, open world areas. Like, oh, this is, you know, the tutorial racing section. Here's the Western section. Here's the this, here's the that. And while those worlds are broad strokes, quite generic, they've obviously had a huge pool of resources to pull from to decorate those worlds. Because as I'm driving around stuff, I'll be like, oh, wait, that's that train set that I owned as a kid. And that's that Life on Mars set that I showed a picture of in the trailer impressions video. And I'm sure there will be a lot more as I kind of go around and take a closer look at things. But it's interesting that LEGO has provided visual concepts with this breadth of knowledge and this kind of pool of archival resources to pull from. And then at least now, in this initial release, not counting whatever is going to come in the season pass down the line, they're not having any specifically themed worlds. But now that I play the game, I don't really mind because the gameplay through all those environments, I'm not driving through the Western section and being like, hmm, I wish this was Rock Raiders or whatever, because I'm having fun just driving and exploring the world. So I know then one of the biggest things on everyone's mind is the car customization, the building, the garage, and it's Pretty impressive. Similar to LEGO Racers 1, not everything is unlocked right at the start. You can unlock stuff as you race, and then you can buy brick packs in the in-game microtransaction storefront. You can buy them with in-game currency, but you can also buy in-game currency with real money. And I'm unsure then if there will be any brick packs that can't be bought with in-game currency, that you have to kind of shell out real-world money in the storefront to buy, which I'm hoping is not the case. But all that being said, once you're in the garage and you're building a car, there is a lot you can do. So I knew that the garage was a space that could really impact the pace of the game because I knew that I could potentially dump a lot of time into kind of crafting the perfect car. So the first time I went in there, I just built a very simple kind of, you know, 90s to early 2000s Lego Roadster type thing. Just, you know, simple parts, simple lines, and I thought it looked pretty good. Then... I went back later and spent almost an hour building this monstrosity. And it's so big and wild and crazy that I could build this perverse abomination of a vehicle and then just kind of drive it around. thought that was really cool. Um, I also tried to build Captain Redbeard's little racer from LEGO Racers 1. The chassis is a little bit too long, so you'll notice that the, that the treasure chest section on the front is two studs too long but I still really like the vibe. It's such a simple little vehicle. Had a lot of fun with it. I also went and I was able to build one of the old school roadsters from Lego City Undercover. Yeah, it's a very powerful editor that you can do a lot of stuff with. And I've already seen a lot of stuff popping up on Twitter of people doing just crazy stuff. I saw someone built the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, I assume, because they had the instruction manual in front of them and they put it all together and it looks great. Yeah, so the editor is really, really cool and there's a lot of stuff you can do with it, but just know that if you're interested in getting through some races, this is not gonna be like Lego Racers 1 where you can just quickly build a car and then get into a race. You can spend a lot of time building your car and then suddenly you're like, hmm, I've spent six hours in this game and one of those hours has been spent racing. So be warned. It was also weird for me to learn that the player character counts as a piece in the car editor. So you can place the driver kind of wherever you want in a standing or seated position. What that means is that as you get your car destroyed, you can lose your driver and then your car is just kind of driving by itself, which is weird to me. 
what they do is that when your car gets destroyed, you you know burst into a ball of flames and you just kind of respawn akin to you know something like Star Wars Racer. But I wish they did the thing from Lego Racers 2 where your little man is just running across the track because I always found that to be inordinately hilarious. And you could still have, you know, stuff get destroyed as you run through it like the Kool-Aid man and then you build your car back and you could do that. But they didn't do that and whatever, it's fine. It doesn't impact gameplay that much. I just thought it was charming that Lego Racers 2 you can run around the track like a tiny little crazy person. So my bottom line then from the trailer impressions video was... So I am optimistic that LEGO 2K Drive, at the very least, plays well and is fun. And I am happy to say, LEGO 2K Drive plays well and is fun. It's got its, you know, modern live service game quirks that you're going to have to put up with, but you can mostly avoid them... If you are like me and you don't necessarily care to have all the pre-built custom vehicles, and you're just going to you know, do your own thing. But yeah, I'm, ex- I'm very excited to play more of this, and I'm very happy that at its core, it's just there's a really solid game here, at least gameplay-wise. The story I'm not like super attached to, but I'm also not the target demographic for this game. I'm not a 10-year-old. I wasn't born in 2013. I am someone who is almost 30, who played a phenomenal LEGO racing game 24 years ago. And I like this new one. Yeah, and so those are are broadly my thoughts about the first four or five hours of LEGO 2K Drive. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I'm excited to play more of it. And I'm excited to go back through my own kind of personal archive of Lego sets and see what I can build in the garage, because I think that's going to be a lot of fun, having built that one little roadster from Lego City Undercover and getting, getting a taste for blood and wanting to do more of it. So we will have a bigger review coming down the road once I get this whole game under my belt, or most of the game under my belt, and you can watch that whenever it's done. I'm just having a grand old time over here with my new Lego racing game. Have you played it? What are your thoughts? Drop them in the comments. What's your favorite car? What's a car you'd like to see built in this game? What's a boat you'd like to see built in this game? I kind of totally forgot. I haven't played around with the boat editor at all, but that's something I can do in this game. So maybe I'll have to go look through Lego boats as well. If you like this video, leave us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, let us know what you think. And yeah, as always, I'm Jake Terrio. This has been a video on Subpixel, and uh, thank you for watching.